Morning all you brother and sister stitchers. Welcome to an impromptu visit to Marion's world. Um, it's a rainy rainy day here this morning and I've just decided I'm going to make some bunting for the sewing room because the wall over there hasn't really got anything at the top and it's a rainy day and I've got tons of fabric I can use and so I'm going to make some bunting and it's likely to be quick and it's not going to be too precious. It's just going to be bunting that goes on the wall by some time later today. So without further ado, we'll go and look for some. There's a mess everywhere as I'm sorting out and trying to find the bits that I want to make the fabric bunting. So I do have like the leftover from my linen dress. I've got vintage um embroidered bits that i've used for other things and there's just bits cut out so i think i'll be using them you can see i've used the middle for something else really like this bit and i like the shape of it actually so it's it's been maybe a dressing table set or something like that i sort of ashamed to cut it when i haven't cut it already but i'm feeling that that's a really nice shape so I think what I'm intending to do is use this as the middle of my bunting and then cut some lovely scalloped shapes from my other fabric to match the shape if not the size but this can be one in the middle. More mess over here too. Lots of um, things being pulled out. I might use these. They might be nice to go on it. Oh and I've just remembered. Look what I've got. I haven't used this for anything. Oh my goodness, I forgot I had it. Um, they definitely have to get put into bunting. I think I bought these with the intention of making my sewing machine cover um, for the Benina, but it hardly ever needs a cover on because I'm always using it. So actually, that would be really nice. So I've got that one, this one, and that one with the spotties on. I do have another great big peak. I've actually I actually bought enough of this to make a skirt because I just felt that I'd be quite happy walking around in a skirt that had lots of sewing implements on it. How cool is that fabric? I definitely have to make a skirt out of that. I just thought I'd show you quickly how I'm gonna make a simple template. I mean there's Definitely times when you want to be using a compass and a measuring tape and a ruler and sometimes you just don't need to. I want to make a lovely rounded shape that will match with that lovely table centre. I've got a jar lid that I use for paint water and I'm going to draw around it. Okay, I've drawn around it. So I've got the, we've got the bottom of the little flag. So we need a nice piece to go on there. All I'm going to use is this tin. I've got a tin. If I line that up with the bottom and one side, I'll have a perfectly nice right angle. And then I can just, whoops, I can just draw there. And I can do the same on the other side. I can just line it up with the two pieces of the circle. So at the bottom and at the side there. And then again, I can just draw down. Now I can decide how long my pendant needs to be. I think that looks about right actually, where I've put that mark. And again, the tin can just go straight back in, line it all up, draw your line, cut it out. One beautiful shape ready to use as a template. So I've measured the length of my room with my bit of garden twine and it's going to hang up on that wall behind me. So I've got the length of the room and then I've added about another three, me three feet or a metre onto the length to allow for the, the loops to go. And because I've decided to use that as my inspiration and put that one in the middle uncut, I've 
just half mast fine so I can start actually in the middle and build it build my bunting out from both sides and all I'm going to do is I've just put the twine inside so I know there's times when you want to slow stitch some bunting and take ages and put beautiful embroideries on it and I'm always up for that but today I just want to make something and put it up so I'm going to do it the, the easiest way I think I know how so I've just halved my old tray cloth over the string like that so it's hanging so this will be a double sided bunting I'll be able to change sides if I want so I could make them two totally different I could make it like a, a pastel one and a bright one if I wanted we'll just see how I go uh, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to start at one edge I've just got white on the top beige on the bottom and a nice beige or grey is a good nondescript colour and it, it sort of blends in with most things uh, if you don't want it to be you know sort of uh, being very visible so I quite often just use a beige or a grey in the bottom bobbin and all I'm going to do is uh, stitch around it with a straight stitch I'm not going to follow the scallops or anything uh, a little bit of back I'm going to say back backspace again, back sewing again to start off and then I'm just going to go all the way around matching up the scallops and so I'll be making a double sided little flag um, but stitching it onto the onto the string at the same time so we've already put out a whole a whole step there and making this quite a quick saw. So, following it round, keeping the edges nice together. I'm not bothering about how near the edge I'm going because on the other one that I've cut out, I'm going to leave a raw edge anyway. I'm not, I don't really want the look of turned under. I want it to look a bit more free. The needle is unthreaded. I'll be back in a minute. Threaded again. This making videos business is a lot more complicated than I imagine. Okay. Okay, so I've got the first one sewn on. I can't actually move really very much because I've sewn right over the string. So I've finished half of it now. I've actually had to work my method out a bit because it wasn't working very well at the beginning. But now I've got a good method to show you. But it hasn't taken me very long. Look, that one, I've put a doily in front of it. And it's got sewing ladies on the back. Um, they're all double-sided so that you can have it whichever way round. So there's two different little methods to go, to do, dependent on what your fabric's like. So if you have a fabric that's only one way up like that, or like that then draw around the template with your disappearing pen and cut out the shapes about a quarter of an inch bigger and that means you can sew on the drawn line and that'll come out perfect if you've got a fabric that looks the same both ways and so I'm just going to look at this one here. Look at that one there, for instance. What you can do is then just fold it in half and put your template on and leave the fold at the top. Again, draw around the template and cut it out. But then the fold will go over the string and that saves cutting two separate things out. But at the moment, I've got those two waiting to go. I've got this little bit of fabric here and I'm going to put my template over it and cut that one out. So I'm going to fussy cut this, um, which I, I don't fussy cut things very often because I try not to waste my fabric. And for years, I didn't really have money to buy fabric. And so I was always using old clothes and, and charity thrift shop fabric and um, 
I just I couldn't really want to waste the fabric by fussy cutting. But nowadays it depends. These all bits of tablecloths. Um I just like to use the nice bits of embroidery and then the rest of the lovely linen is good for um stitch books or slow stitching or all sorts. So I still use it all up. Um, and if you've got a fabric with a really beautiful pattern, that is a lovely way of doing it. Uh, I try to be a bit more eco-friendly and, and not waste my fabric wherever I can. Anyway, so I've just put my template on top and I'm going to draw around it. Just draw around the edge with my, um, with my disappearing pen. And that will be the stitch line. I don't know whether I can do it with one hand. This is how bad things are. Anyway, there we are. Okay, so I'm going to cut that out with about a quarter of an inch seam allowance on it. Nestle the string right up against that sewn line and then you're ready to go around the rest of the the rest of the shape. The pins are in so that the curve at the bottom doesn't stretch out with it being on the bias. So I'm going to go right over the string and I'm just going to sew on top of my drawn line of the template because we can take that out with some water right at the end. So I'll just carry on going around. The pins are really helpful. Take them out. All the way round, all the way round. Oops. And as you're coming up the very last part here, uh, just hold the string out nice and horizontal with the top so that it doesn't get caught at all in the string. And then just go right over it and it'll keep the it'll keep the, the pennant exactly in the right place it won't slide about and so I've done that I've done a bit of back sewing and I snip my threads and because you're back at the start you can snip your top threads as well and then if you want to do any more trimming you can but we've got there's a little pennant the next one Again, I've got my two pieces, I've got the nice tree, it was my daughter's bedroom curtains, and covering a chair. Uh, so I'm going to go along the top line and stop at your blue line coming down. Pivot, lay in the string underneath, leaving you a couple of inches between your little flags. I'm going to put two pins in on the curve just to stop the bias stretching out as I go around it. That's all it needs really, but you can pin more if you want. I'm not necessarily a pinner unless I'm doing clothes and then I, and then I pin, pin, pin. And just be careful as you go around the curve to not get your string in the way or one of your previously done um, flags in the way and sew them as well because I actually did that on the bit you didn't see. I'm going round the corner I'm just holding it down really firmly with my hand making sure I don't sew over the pins but the pins are still in. Now the other way of doing it is if you've got a piece of fabric that's not going to matter if it gets folded over so it doesn't have like a one-way pattern it's just to fold your fabric in half and leave the fold on the top and then draw around your template. And although we still need to um, sew that line to keep the string on, it's actually just, it's a more economical use of your fabric. So with the folded over ones, the only thing to watch is to still put the line across the top so that they all look the same when they're hanging because if you just leave the fold they won't have that little quarter inch sticking up above the string and so to make it look the same even though it's 
folded over and you don't need the line I still sew along that line with a quarter of an inch a quarter of an inch seam and then still you have a line to snuggle your string up to leaving your two inches and then pivot round down and around you go I'll still put those pins in I think for the bias round the bottom I found that, I found that actually quite helpful easing it round it's nice when you don't have to turn things out in the olden days you definitely wouldn't have got away with voyages like this so I'm quite pleased that this is now quite a thing you can say you did it on purpose rather than just being lazy and not wanting to turn it through. Funny how fashions change in sewing as in everything else. Okay, so another one done. The good thing about going all the way around as well, with even with the folded ones, is that your starting and finishing threads are all at the same side and so it's easy to snip. Okay, so it's still got this little sticking up bit just like that one has there you can see it on cloth stick it out so you can see on there there's the little sticking up bit above the line so even though that's folded over because i've done that little quarter inch it's going to look the same i've just finished the last one i didn't actually measure my room i just held the string and measured it by eye and added about three feet on for the loop um so i hope i've estimated that about right i've just put my last pennant on that's the back actually so they're double sided them those ones uh and that one isn't though that one's got it's curtain fabric on the back and my sewing lady on the front so i'm going to go around um and I'm just going to check them all for threads and take all the blue marks off and then it'll be the moment of truth to see if it looks pretty and whether I got the length right. Um, so I'll check back with you in a minute. Well here it is everyone and it's looking really nice. I like the sewing ladies on there. I really like the old textiles and each piece of this tells a history to me because the little tree one is my daughter's bedroom curtains. The pink flower there is from old cushions that I made into a bag. There's the chair cover, more old textile, crochet doily, oak leaves and mushrooms. And when I look at those old textiles, the old linens, I just, I think those people that did that, they'd love to think that it was still getting looked at and not just in some landfill or some old drawer. So I think we have to thank them for the legacy of all those old linens. We can either use them for their purpose by putting them on our tables or what have you. Or we can use them for something else and repurpose them. And I just hope that in however many years time when I'm long gone and somebody finds something that I've done, that they'd rather use it and turn it into something than it just get thrown out. And then that'll be a circle complete then. Oh, I can hear boo. I'm going to go I'll leave you with this lovely picture of it. I'll stand back. There we go. New bunting in the workroom. Bye for now. I hope you like the video and subscribe to Marion's World. See you next time.